Corner foil Ocos are cheap, just in case I want to put one some in Dark Depths <laughs> on the off chance I play it in six months before it gets banned in Legacy. Right. Oh, God. All right. This is an axe? An axe. An axe. He Annex. is holding an axe. An axe. An axe. Like Xanax, but without the X. Yeah. Or An- without the first X. Yeah. An axe. An axe. All right. <laughs> An axe. <laughs> An axe. An axe. Goddamn. All right, here we go. Now is uh, red, and I tried to work myself out to pronouncing this first one. Here we go. An axe. Uh, hardened in the Forge is a one uh, red, red legendary enchantment creature. Demigod. Yeah, that's kind of weird, right? Yeah, he was but, a regular dude last time we were in Theros. Yeah, the uh, type, uh, the type line is longer than some cards. Uh, yeah, uh, flavor text <laughs> or rule text. So, this is a star three, mm-hmm. where the power is equal to your devotion to red. So, if he comes out and he's the only guy in your board, two three, two three. Um, if you have two of them, uh, one of them dies because it's a legend. Correct. So, still a two three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got it. Cool. So I, I didn't know this would be a quiz. Uh, so annex. Uh, whenever another token, whenever annex or another token creature you control, non-token, non-token creature you yep. control dies. Create a one-one satyr token with this creature can't block. Mm-hmm. If uh, if the creature had power four or greater, you create two of those tokens instead. Weird. That's like the same text as a uh, which is which of that you ignored. Yes, that I ignored. Yeah. Um. So, it kind of like our nightmare guy. It kind of doubles your board. Gives you a way to double your board so yeah. you can kind of, you know, woe strider. If you had, like, if you like a mayhem devil and a woe strider and one of these two things, you just machine gun down mm-hmm. everything. Now, this does not work with the nightmare guy. Uh, because if you exile, exile. it to the nightmare oh, guy, yeah, yeah. it okay, wouldn't okay, die. Okay. You can't replace the same thing twice. So. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so fair. you can't have both of them, but you can do one or the other. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure which one's better. Like if it's an aggressively slanted deck, like this guy's probably better. Yeah. Um, if it's more like mid rangey or like value engine engine oriented, the nightmare guy's probably better. Mm-hmm. Um but this guy does a lot. Still works with cat. Like every time yeah. you cycle a cat, that's you true. make a one one. Oh yeah, that's good. Right. So it's like deal a, deal two damage because of course you have a mayhem devil. Right. Make a one one. Now, the 1-1 one, one can't block, so you do lose a lot of the, like, value of a 1-1 a one, one as a chump blocker. You know what it's great with, though? Uh, what? Judith. <laughs> Fair. Well, she doesn't, she only pings on non-token, but it makes it a 2-1. It makes it a 2-1, though. Yeah. You get an army of 2-1s. Yeah. That's, What's not great about that? It's, it's good. It doubles your 1-1s. One it doubles your 1-1s. One <laughs> it's twice as good. So, again, this is just another card that's, like, planted for, like, some sort of red-black yeah. sacrifice deck. Yeah. Uh, like, I think in Constructed, you're probably limited to playing, you know, you can't play the full four. No. Of these guys, because it's a legend. Maybe you play two or whatever, mm-hmm. but... And I think that's fine. Yeah, I think it's Like, good. that deck's probably f- um, a little full on playables anyway. Yeah. So I don't think you have room for more than a couple of those guys, yeah. especially since you have this next guy. Yeah, we have so many, so many guys. Yeah. So we have Blood Aspirant. Yep. This is, so I feel uh, like we had this card name before. It feels very familiar. I don't know. I think Aspirant's a very uh, Magic the Gathering-y word. Yeah, it, it might be. not a word that you use to describe things every day, but I no. think it's on a lot of cards. No, I don't look at my students and go, like, you're a graduation aspirant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, well, it's because you look at your students and say, you're going to fail. <laughs> I, don't, I don't say that. Oh, I've Honest. heard stories. <laughs> <laughs> There have been people that have failed, but anyway, anyway, anyway don't get me fired. Uh, I won't get you fired. All right, so Blood Aspirin. Your boss isn't listening to this anyway. This is true. <laughs> One of my former students is dating Jacob. Yeah? Yeah, I had her in class last semester. Like, we started hanging out when we went to GPDC, and I was like, oh, so the whole time she was in my class, I had no idea. <laughs> so you never know. All right. Yeah. My students know about this podcast, and so my boss <laughs> might end up listening. Uh, Shh, don't tell. Yeah, you're all going to pass, yeah. hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Blood Aspirant okay. is a one and a red for a 1-1 one, one Seder Berserker. Um, says whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Yes. So this guy can get real big real fast. He can. Yep. Uh, he then has an activated ability for one and a red and tap it. 
Uh, sacrifice a creature or enchantment. It deals one damage to target creature, and that creature can't block this turn. Yeah, so it does. Um, so it like has a way to sacrifice. Mm-hmm. It can feed itself a little bit, mm-hmm. and also like that creature can't block this turn's relevant. Like yeah. even if the one damage isn't shutting off their huge blockers. Yeah, is there's a way for you to like push damage through. Yeah, right. They questing beast, and then you're like, all right, I'll take four. Now it can't block. Kill you. Kill you. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and I mean, it can just become like a threat. Like, mm-hmm. imagine getting attacked with this in combat, and they have like cat oven. Right. You're just like, I can't block it because yeah. I'm going to take a million. Right. If I block it, my thing's going to die. And if I don't block it, I'm going to take literal millions. Right. I don't know what I do. Sack cat, sack food, sack fable passage. It's a four four. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, and of course they have it all. So they had the mayhem devil, and you're just like, oh, right, I'm dead yeah. now. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm turn four, and I just took a million. All right, cool. Yeah. So again, like, depends on the slant of the deck, mm-hmm. and there are seemingly a million different like right. cards that go in a sacrifice deck. Yeah. So, like, I think this probably takes like the priest of the forgotten god slot if you're like red black and more aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I think there's two different ways to build that deck. You can build it more mid rangey, mm-hmm. or you can build it more aggressive, and this is definitely a more aggressive card. Yep. Yes. Uh. This is your boy. I'll let you talk about this one. What is this? Ox of Agnos? Sure. Sure. So it's uh, three red red. Mm -hmm. You're never, ever going to pay three red 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 for this card. Your game has gone terribly wrong. Well, I mean, you might, but you're... Doing it wrong. Should not be your plan A or your plan B. For a 4-2. Yeah. And when it enters the battlefield, discard your hand and draw three cards. Why would you want to do that? Well... What if you have no cards in your hand? Oh, then it's just draw three cards. Then it's just draw three cards. That's great. A plus good times. Also, what if you had things in your hand that you wanted to discard? Even better. Even better. And it has escape for red, red. That's not a lot. That's not a lot. And, but you have to exile eight other cards from your graveyard, which sounds like a lot. It does sound like a lot. Um, now, when it escapes, mm-hmm. you can put a plus, you put uh, a plus one, plus one counter on it. So, so it it's escapes a five, three. A five three. Yep. So, I do believe I tweeted out this is the dredgiest card to have ever dredged. Yep. So, you, like, are dredger, dredge, like, you dredge twice, Mm -hmm. you have eight cards in your graveyard. If you hit one of these, you just discard all the stuff you want in your graveyard. Right. Dredge a whole bunch more. Because discard, then draw, so you get to dredge the cards that you just discarded. Yeah, so you have, like, two dredgers in your hand, you're like, dredge a stink weed imp, dredge a stink weed imp discard and you're going to dredge like 15 cards yeah plus get a five three plus all the counters yeah so like you know a game where you go like land cathartic reunion Mm -hmm. you're going to be able to play this for its escape cost if you flip it and have cards left over to to dredge yeah so this is a card that will do nothing fair Oh, yeah. No, this only does broken things. This only it does, like, the most busted things you can imagine, mm-hmm. which is great. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I think this, this card will could see a home in, like, modern dredge. Mm-hmm. Uh, if legacy dredge uh, is good, it could see a home. It could be a card there. Like, mm-hmm. you'd have to rebuild the mana base. Yeah. But quite a bit. Yeah, but you could be more of a blue red deck as opposed to kind of like a like a, a Grixis deck mm-hmm. as opposed to like weird four color piley thing. What about uh like in standard? Um eight is a lot. Eight is a lot. And I don't know if there's enough support. Mm-hmm. Right? If we still had like Citrus Supplier, remember yeah. the black green Molder Hulk decks? Like they could get a ton of cards in their graveyards because they would go like supplier into like Mm -hmm. glow spore shaman and you'd have off to the races yeah you'd have five cards in your graveyard then you would block with your citrus supplier and then like this would be live Mm -hmm. but i don't know if it gets there yeah i don't know if there's enough stuff and like i don't know a five three that makes you discard your hand and draw three again if you have no cards in hand Mm -hmm. it's great it's like rick's body reveler Mm mm-hmm uh like i think if there's enough stuff to build like mono red yeah um this might see a little bit of play because you're like trading off your early guys anyway and then it's a way to rebuild later in the game yeah you just like have a four two it's just really under for like four two yeah 
like over costed. You mean? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, on the front o- half. On the, yeah, it's yeah. it's under it's over costed for just a four two vanilla, mm-hmm. right? I think we've seen that at like three mana. Yeah, not with the draw clause. So like you know, right. if it is like turn five and this is your last card and it draws you three cards, that's great. Mm-hmm. But I don't. But it doesn't have like haste or trample right. or any kind of like. The only thing that I was thinking is um, like Bedlam Reveler. Uh-huh. Like this is kind of a you can compare it to Bedlam Reveler, right? Yes. Um, Bedlam Reveler, you never wanted to see multiples in your hand yes. because it always meant you had to pitch one to another one. Yeah, this, this doesn't care because yeah, like it wants to be in your graveyard. You just put it in your graveyard and can play it again. Yeah, which is fair. Yeah, but um, again, I don't think it's going to do anything fair. Yeah. Do you think this is there still a like a blue red Drake's deck? Like um, a Terramander, Crackling Drake, Arclight Phoenix. Like, this could see playing yeah, that. Yeah, because you could just, you like, you'd be fine, like, milling it over. Like, there is that, like, weird, like, Drown Secrets, mm-hmm. uh, like, kind of Grixis deck that plays Merfolk Secret Keepers, Arclight Phoenixes, and stuff. Yeah, like, it could be something where you just get a bunch of, like, five threes late in the game. Mm-hmm. Like, you just get rid of all your lands and stuff that you need. Yeah, I mean, it's like it could do something there. I don't know. It was just a thought. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm looking at it in older formats. Yeah. Well, not everybody plays older formats, I so I like to I like I to look at things from all angles. Do you like sneak attack? That's an interesting angle. Do you like sneak attack here? Well, here, in yeah. this card. Yeah. It's uh, Perforos, the bronze-blooded. Yes. Uh, four and a red for a 7-6. That's a big boy. That's huge. That's like the biggest god yet. I think, yeah. I think it is. It's a legendary enchantment creature god. It's indestructible. Has the god text where it's not a creature unless uh, you have devotion five or more. Yes. Um, has other creatures you control have haste. Yes. And for two and a red, you can put a red or artifact creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. And then you have to sacrifice it to be any of the next end step. So? I mean, they're dead. Right. Yeah. So what are we going to put in play with this thing? Uh, You're going to put in Dracoseth. Yeah. And you're going to put in the um, uh, theme deck dragon. Okay. It's five red red for a five five flyer. It has double strike. And all Ooh. other creatures you control have double strike. Ooh. The turn it comes into play. Wow. So you track so you play Seth. this guy on turn five and then double activate him on turn six. Mm-hmm. And you put 24 power of uh, hasty flying damage. Also, enough devotion to make him active. Ooh. And Draco Seth will clear out all of their blockers for you. Spicy. Yeah. So then you go. There you go. Yep. That'll just end the game. We just broke standard. Like, good luck, everyone. Uh, see it. <laughs> see it the PT. Uh, my work here is done. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Right. You know, other than the fact that I'm going to be drawing eight mana on castles <laughs> <laughs> for four turns of the game. Well, I mean, you could do it like a red black, um, like a reanimator deck, mm-hmm. or run like Blood for Bones or something too. So you have like a backup plan. Yeah, uh, or Grixis, so you can discard oh, stuff yeah. to your thirst for meaning. There you go. That too. There you go. That works. We again, we fixed it, folks. <laughs> it's been it's been real. It's been fun. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to note that we're going to revisit in a little bit okay. here is that we are headed to Akoria next, mm-hmm. which is the lair of the behemoths. The big so boys it sounds like very large creatures. Yes, things that you might want to sneak into play with a uh, Perforos. This is very true. So this may be like. A plant for later on. Yeah, if it doesn't see a ton of play right now, maybe scoop them up while they're cheap, and uh, yeah, get ready for putting some big, big bad guys into play. Also, um, the way it's templated, if mm-hmm. you're feeling particularly frisky, <clears throat> is you can put things on the battlefield on your opponent's end step, and they oh. will come through your turn. So, like late in the game, if you had like three things that you needed to put in, yeah. You could go, like, end of their turn, put in a thing. That's interesting. Your turn, put in two things. Yeah. Blah, 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 and attack. Uh, <laughs> Technical turn. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Blah, 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 and just, <laughs> just come at them. <laughs> so you can, like, stick something in on the end step. All right. And it's also not yeah, limited. About that. It's also not limited, like, the same way it's not limited to your turn. Like, surprise blockers. Right. Like, boo. 
Surprise, here's an ox. Yeah, here's an ox. Oh. That's actually pretty good with this. Yeah, you put him in, then he dies, then you bring him, you put him in and you draw three cards. Right. And that's hopefully fuel to kill them the next turn. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I so, hadn't thought of that. So that's there are some one. things there. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Usually when you put two mythics together, good things happen. Yeah. Uh, this is true. Also, what is his name? Uh, the Big Pig. Oh, yeah. Big Pig's cute. Big Pig. It, you just get to put in all the things. All of the things. Like, they just you end up with, like, <laughs> three things in play. Mm-hmm. So, hasty. Hasty. Yep. Hasty things. All right. This one's going to take some work. Does every card have a, or does every color have a card that's just a wall of text? It's, welcome to 2020. Yeah. Wall Two th- of text. 2019 was last year, and that <laughs> se- we were happy with this power level and amount of text on all these cards. Yeah. So we're back to more text. <sighs> all right, Storm Herald. Okay. Two and a red mm-hmm. for a 3-2. That is reasonable. Yep. It's a human shaman, if it matters, and has haste. Okay. Now for a war and peace. Yep. Uh, when Storm Herald enters the battlefield, return any number of aura cards. From your graveyard to the battlefield, attached to creatures you control. Okay. So you can, uh, like, you don't have to put them on him. You can put them on anything. Right. Uh, exile those auras at the beginning of your next end step. If those auras would leave the battlefield, exile them instead of putting them anywhere else. This card is templated weird. It is. Because, like, it just says aura cards, but you have to attach them to creatures? Yes. So can you target, like, a Gift of Paradise and put it on your Llanowar Elf? No, it still has to be a legal target for the aura. Cause the, but you can target it with this. No, it it would fall off. Right, but you could target it. Like, would it would it enter the battlefield for Constellation? Yes. And then it would immediately fall off. Yeah, the way that, like, returning auras to the battlefield works is super weird. Like, yeah. you can you can enchant hexproof creatures. That your opponent controls by returning the aura because it doesn't target. Oh, that's super weird. Yeah, so you can like sneak a passivism on a hexproof creature if you have like a return an enchantment from your graveyard to the battlefield. Yeah. It comes to the battlefield and then you put it on something, and in that action you don't target. Hmm. Loopholes. Have some pants, little guy. Yeah. So you can like, but as soon as it went to check state based actions, yeah. it would say there's nothing this, here. This well, it would say this aura. If you want to put your gift of paradise on your Lanawar elves, it would say, "Oh, this aura says enchant land. Mm-hmm. Lanawar elves is not a land. They can, it can't enchant it." Would you? You'd gain your three life though, right? It would come into the battlefield, so I think you would. Yes. Yeah. But it, 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 it would kind of come onto the battlefield and then yeah. immediately fall off because you couldn't put it on a creature. Yeah. Uh, Very strange. It is weird. Um, it's weird that they templated it that way. Yeah. There are a few like weird random there's is it like aspect of the lamprey which is like it comes into play and like your opponent discards a card it's like and gives your creature life link it's like three and a oh, black yeah, yeah, yeah. right so if that's in your graveyard it's a way to like discard a card uh to make your opponent discard a card yeah so there are some weird like end of the battlefield triggers on your auras mm-hmm that are kind of unique to this stereo set. So this could do some shenanigans, but we don't have um, Eldrazi Conscription. Right. That's like the thing that everybody else thought of, right? Yeah. We don't have like that great big, like yeah. dumb, put an aura, like put a game winning aura on this thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. And I don't know if like, this is a deck that you show up to your F&M. Mm-hmm. And you like spend the first like four turns like casting thrill of possibilities <laughs> and just dumping like the all these enchantments in your, in your graveyard. graveyard, and then you slam this guy across your fingers and try to swing <laughs> for twenty seven. Yeah, but you know, live the dream. What's the um? Uh, I guess that doesn't work because you have to exile this. But it isn't there like a aspect of wolf or something comes in. It's like a four drop gives a creature like. Plus two, plus two, and makes a and makes a wolf. Well, it makes two wolves when it dies. Oh, okay. There's it's in this set. I thought it was. I thought it was an a, an enchant land that like you, you the know. land taps for an additional mana, but you pay four and a green, and it uh, makes two wolves. You sacrifice no, it, makes two wolves. 
uh, or like Nightly mm-hmm. Valor. Mm-hmm. It comes in and makes it two two. Like there yeah. are ways that you could like get things off of your enchantments. Yeah. But and like <clears> this guy doesn't have like hexproof. Like right. like if you play him and like he's your only creature mm-hmm. and they're like kill, kill it, it and you're just like no but 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 my whole <laughs> my whole my whole game plan why no I think like to play this guy you have to find a way to make like the enter the battlefield stuff of the enchantment matter yeah or play Eldrazi conscription yes. like one of the two yes uh I guess like you have to play modern mm-hmm. to play Eldrazi conscription that's true so. Yeah. And I wouldn't say that this guy's modern playable. No. <laughs> no. No. Right, next up we have Storm's Wrath. Yeah, this card's pretty exciting, right? Yeah. Uh, hopefully this is uh, a sign of times to come. So yeah. this is two red red mm-hmm. for a sorcery. Storm's Wrath deals four damage to each creature and each planeswalker. Ooh, fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, this card's great. Four uh, damage is a sweet spot. We have four damage is... Like usually these do three. Yeah, they they put an extra point, an extra convert, uh, an extra mana on it mm-hmm. to get it from three to four. Right, and then they added the planeswalker text, which which is awesome, which is good. Like yeah. it's it's good to have something that can clean up creatures and planeswalkers, so it's not like it's not dead against really any deck. Right, yeah, you can still use it against your control decks. Right, like they 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 down tick their narset, mm-hmm. and you play this and you kill s- it still get to kill it yep it's not like it's just like oh i have no targets yeah. for this maybe you cleaned up a teferi too yeah so because yeah, i guess teferi starts on four so if they uptick yep. he goes to five but then like he doesn't do anything right for multiple turns yeah but if they bounce something like, yeah then you, definitely then you still have it. your guy you can clean up the teferi yeah so it's it's definitely good i hope they print more cards that have this like creature planeswalker mm-hmm. flexibility because really right now like black is the only mm-hmm. color that has those kind of cards right did you notice who's in the artwork there i do not know who that is it's Karanos. is it Karanos? it is like why didn't we get a card then i don't know we did storm's wrath yeah yeah no i want <laughs> Three blue, red, five, seven. Big guy. Yeah. <laughs> Devotion. Lightning blue. bolts and card draw. Yeah. And... Not just like, hey, man, he might be in the art. <laughs> it's like, oh, cool. I'm glad he might be in the art. Like, no, great. That's definitely him. Okay. But still, like. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's only one set. They didn't have room to print everything. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Whose fault is that? Well, not mine. It's wizards. <laughs> give us all this stuff. We had to give you a triple green mythic. Uh, we couldn't give you a blue red god. <laughs> um, so the next up um, is Tectonic Giant. Yeah, I think this thing's pretty sweet. You don't seem very excited. I, the card is very good. Okay. I just am like, why? Why do we need this? Why, why is this a thing that needs to be a thing? All right, well, this guy is a two red red for a three four. And when it attacks or becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, choose one. Okay. Uh, it deals three damage to each opponent. Okay. So it bolts your opponent. That's pretty good. Or exile the top two cards of your library, choose one of them until the end of your next turn. You can play that card. Yeah. Um, remember a simpler time when we had Thunderbreak Regent? Mm-hmm. That, that was great. Yeah, it was a 4-4 four, four flyer that had the first line of if it becomes a target of a spell, deal three. Yep. It's garbage time. Rolling, 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 rolling. Come on. Rolling, rolling, rolling. rolling. What? <laughs> I know too much of that song. <laughs> Man, it's still going. Taking the dumpster for a walk. Where? It's not coming through the mic. Okay. <clears throat> So remember Thunderbreak Regent, mm-hmm. a simpler time, two red red for a four four flyer that when it was targeted it dealt four. Yeah, that card was great. Yeah, yeah, it was. Now we have we, it lost flying and it lost a point of power. But now whenever you turn the card sideways, it does it. Draws it. you a card too. Yeah, wh- or draws or you a card. What the heck? <laughs> that card wasn't printed twenty years ago. It was printed right. like five years ago. Yep. And it's just like, eh, let's just make something. Way better. You know what else? What? It's an elemental. Oh, gosh. 
Hey, if you, trigger risen reef. If you can, if you can go like one blue green into <laughs> two, two red R-R. red, like you deserve that risen <laughs> reef trigger. You did it. Yeah. Uh, and then you, I assume you just go into Nissa because that's what They're you probably, do. Yeah. <laughs> so you, if you have green mana in your deck, <laughs> Nissa. Nissa. So I think this card's sweet. Yeah. And then you attack with it, and it reveals a Hydroid Crisis, and your opponent just Ooh. scoops up the cards. Well, <laughs> Big this was brain fun. Plays. <laughs> this was fun. Uh, so the card draw is relevant. Yeah. Like, I, that's a big upside on this guy. Yeah, I think that in any kind of, like, if this is your top end mm-hmm. of, like, an aggressive red deck, mm-hmm. like, that's great, because they can't ever target it. Right. And they can't ever let it attack. Right. I mean... Right, if it's on, like, if you stick this on an empty board, they don't immediately play a creature. It has six power. Mm-hmm. Well, like, they can't, like, deal with it. Yeah. They like, have to have, like, giant blocker. Right, you go, they like. They need Lovestruck Beast, exactly. You, you go, like, one, two, three, this. Mm-hmm. They've taken some damage, mm-hmm. and then you attack and you bolt them. Does this replace, like, Mayhem Devil and the current red-black aggro lists, you think? Um... It It'd be a little bit easier on the mana if you're trying to do like Ember Cleave in this instead of like Ember Cleave and Mayhem Devil. Or not Mayhem Devil. Spawn of Mayhem. Spawn of Mayhem. Yeah. It could. I mean, the fact that Spawn of Mayhem could come down on three mm-hmm. is, is a big deal. I was thinking like in the Gruel decks. Oh, yeah. Right? Like playing for Questing Beast sometimes is a liability because they yeah. give up your hand. Like you could. Listen to the dumpster again. <laughs> Don't you see the sign? The sound of my people. <laughs> <laughs> Why are your people dumpster people? Oscar the Grouch, man. Fine. <laughs> I've never looked at you and thought, like, Oscar the Grouch. Dumpster person. He's green. He's furry. Yeah, Oscar the Grouch. Well, I mean, I've been one to of your home. It's very nice. One of those two things. Furry, yeah. I've been to your home. It's very nice. It's very nice. It's not like you live you, in a dumpster. You wouldn't ever in a million years expect that I lived there. <laughs> Is it true? If you like, just brought someone around and be like, who's that guy in the pictures? <laughs> Why does that nice woman have her arms around him? <laughs> well, you see, that nice woman is married to him. I got Why? extremely lucky. That's Why? Why? Like, well, uh, <laughs> that's mean, but uh, fine. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so in the red-black decks, like you're saying, like Spawn of Mayhem yeah. has the upside of flying mm-hmm. and coming down on three. Yeah. But like, in, like the drain every turn is like pretty yeah. relevant, too. But. Yeah. Um, but like in the uh, Gruel decks, mm-hmm. right? Having uh, four, what are they called? Uh, questing beast. Questing beast. Sometimes they get you draw two or three, and they get gummed up in your hand. Yeah. So like this, and if like you were still playing something bigger, like Skargan Hellkite, mm. this could kind of bring your curve down a little bit. Maybe go to three love. Sh- uh, gosh, three questing beasts. Yeah. And like work a couple of these in. Yeah. As like another like threat, and again like the fact that you just could do. Attack, if you turn it sideways, it deals them three. Mm-hmm. Is big upside. Yep. And you know, like, oh, I'm out of cards. Well, I'm gonna turn this guy sideways and flip something over. You could almost make like a mono red beats deck. Yeah. Like between this thing and like Bone Crusher Giant. Yeah, you've got like you've got a reasonable curve. Yeah, you know it doesn't sweep these up. What's that? Rome Cloak Giant. That is true. They yeah, are both giants. Yeah. How's that? How's that? How's that treating you? Oh, terribly. Cool, <laughs> cool, cool. Um, yeah, I think that it's. So are you red white then, and you just like win on turn five? Easy you mode. Could. Yeah, you just like you're like, like uh, stomp your thing, bone crusher giant. This sweep your board. Yeah. Attack for ten. Yeah. No, seems good. GG. Seems good. Yeah, we we broke it again. Sure. Yeah, we you did. heard it here first. You heard it here first. We're just breaking formats left and right. All over the place. Right. We're going to get like a message from someone. I went 0 and 27 on <laughs> Arena. We're it's like, all your fault. It's all your fault. I was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. I'm just going to uh, like sit back sit and let back. you like wax me, poetic about me, uh, this next card. here. Okay. Underworld Breach, one in the red for an enchantment. Okay. And it says non land card. Each non land card in your graveyard has escaped. The escape cost is equal to the card's converted mana cost, plus exile three other cards from your graveyard. 
at the beginning of the end step, sacrifice Underworld Breach. Okay. So, on its face. Yes. This is like a one turn, give everything in your graveyard, escape. Yes. Okay. And you only have to exile three cards. And it costs two mana. It costs two mana. So, okay. the first thing you escape, effectively, is three cards plus its casting cost plus Plus two, two mana. So um, if you wanted to escape, like, a thirst for knowledge. Uh, yeah, thirst for... You did the same thing. I, I, did. I did the thing, yeah. Thirst for meaning. Thirst for meaning, yeah. It would be five. Yeah, it would be two with three blue, red, right. exile three. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, that's dumb. We're not going to do that. Okay. Uh, so, so what are we going to do? First, uh, basically, this card is not an enchantment. It's a right. sorcery. Right. So... Kind of its closest analog mm-hmm. in printed magical history is Yagmas Will, mm-hmm. which is two and a black, and you can cast, you can play any card from your graveyard, and if a card would go to your graveyard from anywhere, you exile it. Okay, so this doesn't have that second clause. It does not have that second clause. This is important. Right. Um. So Yagmas Will is playable. Nowhere, because it's banned. Everywhere. Everywhere. It's pl- yeah. I think you can play it in Vintage, maybe? Yeah, it's probably even restricted there, though, It's right? probably restricted in Vintage. Yeah. Um, banned in Legacy. Yes. If you watch anyone play the Vintage Cube, yeah. uh, if they're playing Storm, you draft Yagmas Will, because it's easy mode then. Right. Because you're like, oh, I drew my Yagmas Will. I guess I just win the game. Mm-hmm. Um, So, it doesn't have you exile cards from your graveyard. It just lets you play them. Right. So the the restriction that this puts on you is you have to have enough food in your graveyard to let you just play cards out of your graveyard kind of for uh, ignoring the, right. the three cards. Yep. So there's in Legacy, there's the where everyone's like, well, you just brain freeze yourself, mm-hmm. which is one of the blue target player mills the top three cards of their library Storm. and has Storm. So you fill your graveyard and you like then just play your whole you just play your entire graveyard out and you win from there. Mm-hmm. Uh that may or may not be doable just because like there's interaction in the format. Right. Um um Pioneer, uh like modern, I'm sure there's something where you can do something with Storm. Mm-hmm. Uh but talking to uh Bowman, resident storm player. Say that a lot of times Storm is short on cards in their graveyard. Yeah. So they need all those cards. So having to exile three might not be worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I can't take credit for this pioneer thing. I can take credit for part of it later on though. Is um, uh, what is it called? Uh, chronic flooding. Okay. This is a common from Return to Ravnica. Okay. I assume you bought foil copies already. I have not. I need to. Okay. I I didn't think I had any copies at all, and then I went and checked, and I had like forty, and I was like, "Sweet." <laughs> um, it's one in the blue for an enchanted land. Um, whenever enchanted land is tapped, a target player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. Okay. So if you enchant a lotus field, every time you tap the lotus field. You put three cards in your graveyard, and you generate three mana. Okay. So every time you tap it, you pay the three escape costs. Right. And if you're casting a spell that's CMC three or less, it's free or up on mana? Yes. So then you can start uh, doing, like, hidden strings, mm-hmm. uh, to, which is one in a blue, untap a permanent, untap another target permanent, and then has Cypher, which I've... Don't know how to do. Yeah, uh, no one does. That was that was a deep cut mechanic <laughs> that I don't think anyone's ever used. Um, so you can just mill yourself out mm-hmm. and then mill out your opponent. Okay. Or you could or win with Thassa's, yeah. uh, whatever it is, Oracle, Oracle, or Jace, right? Or anything else you put in your graveyard because right. you don't have to because you can cast it because you can cast it. Yeah. Uh, so you could like. Uh, I think you can win. I know you can win on turn four. Okay. I think you can win on turn three, but I haven't like 
figure it out. Worked yeah. through yeah. all of it. But you definitely can win a game on turn four by putting an enchantment on your hexproof land <laughs> and being like, you got it? Okay, cool. Um, so it doesn't, I don't know how it does anything fair. Oh, this card doesn't do anything fair. And I don't know, like, what you play in standard to make this card, like, th- this card would be, like, reasonable to be in standard. Yeah. Right? It looks like a card that's just, like, they printed it, and they were just like, this goes directly into Modern and Legacy, and Pioneer does not stop at Standard at all. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you do with this in Standard. Yeah, I, Probably nothing. I mean, if you have a ton of mana, mm-hmm. it maybe reads as a draw two. Right. Right? Like, you know, you, you have eight mana, and you play this, and then you pay two, play two three drops. Yeah. Right? I guess that's good. Kill something and a guy, maybe. Yeah. I guess that's good, but it's not. Yeah, it's not great. Like you're not gonna put that in your car in your deck, right? In hopes of like, well, I hope I get to turn twelve and draw this and have like. So it seems weird. It's kind of like, was it brought back? Yeah, the white white like return two things from your graveyard that went to the went to the graveyard this turn. Like it just seems like, what are we doing? Right. So this is kind of that same vein, and it's just like, what are the busted things you can do? Mm-hmm. So begging to be broken. Yes, I don't know why they why this card exists. Yeah, I'm not sure. But it is here and I'm sure you're happy to have it. Yes, we will figure out something to do with it. I'm I probably I'm ambivalent, but you, yes, you're yeah. like the unfair. Mm, no. Yeah. No. I don't yeah. I don't want this card. <laughs> yeah. no. I'm sure it's gonna make me miserable. <laughs> <laughs> oh you made me discard some stuff? Sweet. <laughs> <laughs>